Hello everyone. Uh, in last session, we have seen right promise concept in JavaScript. And in that, I have explained you how to handle the promise. Using then and cache, I have explained. Okay. Now, using async await, also we can handle the promise object. We can handle the promise object. So, how can we handle? Promise object using async await means let's try to see one example. Let's assume that here I am creating one promise object. Okay, so here I am just adding async await. Let's assume that I am creating one function, function something like create promise. Now whenever I call this function, Let's assume that this function is going to return us. It is going to return us one promise object to us. Okay. So now inside this function, we have to write the logic to create a promise object. So how to create a promise for that? Simply we have to use new operator and promise constructor. Okay. Now what this will do, it will return us one promise object. So we can catch in one variable like var promise. And if you want, you can return that promise from here. You can write something like this or else we can directly return new promise object. We can do something like this. Okay, you can go with this way or you can go with this. So I'm just going with the second way. So here one promise object will be created and that object will be returned. Now this promise object will take one argument and that is one callback function. This callback function will take two parameters. One is resolve and reject. And both the parameters are function type. It means in both these parameters, two predefined functions will be stored. In first parameter, always resolve function will be stored. In second parameter, always your reject function will be stored. Now here, what you can do? Simply I can call resolve. And I can store some data in my promise object. Suppose here I'm just adding something like status true. And here I'm just adding one more property data array and one of here some objects here. Okay, in each object, I will just add one property called name. Here, I will add something like Rohan. Here, name something like Sahil. Here, I will add name something like Zoya. Okay, so what I am doing whenever I call this function, one promise object will be created. Okay, in that promise object, we are storing the data using results. It means we are storing success data and that promise object will be returned. And whenever that promise object is returned, that object we are basically we are catching here. We are let's assume that I am creating one more function. Function something like catch promise. So now in this form, in this function, I want to catch that promise. So for that, I need to call this function called create promise. Now I know that this function is going to return me one promise object. It is going to return me one promise object. So if you want to get the data from that promise object, then what you can do in front of this function, you can use await keyword. You can add something called await keyword. Basically, await is the operator only. It is a special operator. Now, what this await operator is going to do, whatever promise object this function is going to return, it will handle that promise object. And whatever data you have in that promise object, it will return that data to us. So we can catch in one variable, something called data. 
or I can say response, response data. Now, in any function, in any JavaScript function, if you are using await operator, if you are using await operator, then that function should be prefixed with async keyword. You have to pre prefix that function with the async keyword. So in any JavaScript function, if you are using await operator, if you are using await operator, then that function should be prefixed, should be prefixed with the async keyword. If you don't prefix with the async keyword, that await operator will not work. It will not work. So await operator will work inside the async function only. And how to create async function? Just create your normal function and prefix it with the async keyword. That's it. Now here, if I do console.log, console.log of response data, and if I save it, and if I call here my catch promise, let's see what it will print in the terminal. So here I am saying node async underscore await. Node async underscore await. Now see, it is printing us one object. It is simply printing us one object. Here we are able to get that object. Now one more thing what we can do with this async await, we can use try catch block also. Response sometimes we might get the error response, right? So what we can do this line, we can add inside the try block. And if this line is giving us any error response, then that error response you can catch inside this catch block. You can catch inside this catch block. Here you will have that error data. You can have that error data. So here you can just configure, you can get that error data here. You can get that error data. And this console.log you can add inside your try block. So in this line, in this try block, if any error occurs, if any error occurs or if you receive any error data, then catch block will execute. Then catch block will execute. This is one more way how you can handle the promise object using async await. Async await. So is it audible now, my voice? Uh, in case if it voice breaks, just let me know, okay? Let me just check Wi-Fi. Let me know if my voice breaks, okay? Okay. So this is how we are going to catch it. So this is the new way of handling the promise object that is async await. Or else you can go with this try catch block also that we have tried in yesterday's session. So in your companies, uh, people will follow both the approaches. Like some, some companies or in some uh, projects, you might go with try catch. In some projects, you might go with async await. Okay, that depends upon your company choice. A sync update will give you a uh, like neat and clean syntax, whereas try catch looks a little complex because we have to write then, then again in that we have to write one callback again we have to take one parameter, so it gives little complex syntax. Whereas a sync update gives us very simple technique to handle the promise object. So this is the benefit of a sync update and your then catch. Now, where you are going to encounter this async await means whenever you are fetching the data, like when, where you will encounter this promise object means whenever you are fetching the response from the server, 
whenever you send a request and whenever you will receive the response. At that time, you will encounter with this promise object. Now, for example, let's assume that I have a front-end application which I created using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, let's assume that someone developed server-side application and they are maintaining the database also. Okay, they are maintaining some database also. Now let's just assume that in their database, they have some data here. Now I want this data in my front-end application so that I can display that data in my front-end application. That is my requirement. It means from your front-end application, you have to send one request. Server will receive your request. The server will connect with the database. Whatever data they have in the database, the data will be taken by server. They will do some processing here and they will send back the response. And if you want to send this request and get the response, if you want to send the request and you have to get uh, get the response for that we are going to use something called ajax technology we are going to use something called ajax now what this ajax is going to do this ajax will provide us some predefined objects and functions and using those objects and functions we can send some request to a server with that request we can send some data to a server and we can receive the response Okay, and people used to implement Ajax in your application like before your 2013 or like 12. At that time, this Ajax, like I can say before 2015, you can say before 2015 or 14, people used to implement this Ajax methodology. Like they used to do, uh, they used to use these objects and functions to send one request and get the response. Now to send the request and get the response, here you have to follow some three, to five to six steps you have to do. Like you have to create the object of XML HTTP request class. Okay. Then you have to use, you have to open your request. Then you have to send your request. Then you will get the success response that you have to handle with the onload function. Again, in onload function, there is one property called response text in that you will get the data from that. From there, you have to extract the data. If you are receiving uh, error data then you have on error function through on error function you can receive the error data so like this we have to follow nearly five to six steps if you go for plain ajax now no one uses ajax in the industry no one uses okay so now who like instead of ajax what we will use we will use something called one predefined function or api we can say given by your browser that is fetch now, whatever people used to do with Ajax, same thing you can do with fetch also. Now, this is predefined function given by browser. Now, internally fetch implements Ajax only. But here, no need to follow four or five steps or six steps. Here, directly we can use fetch and we can send any type of request. You can send get request, post request, put request, delete request. You can do any kind of request with the fetch. Now, fetch requires one argument if you are doing get request and that is your URL. Here you have to pass the URL. And this URL will be given by your server side people. The people who are building the server side application, they will create the URL and they will provide that URL to a front end people. So as a front end developer, you need not to worry about the URL. So what you have to do, you have to simply use this fetch function. In that you have to pass your URL. And this URL will be given by server side people. Now what this fetch function is going to do, it will send the request based on this URL and it will return you the response. And whatever response it is returning you, that response will be returned in the form of promise object. It means fetch is going to return one promise object. One promise object. So as a front end developer, you have to just use fetch, you have to pass the URL. If you are doing the get request. 
what fetch will do internally it will send the request it will do the network calls and it will return you the response in the form of promise object now whenever it is returning the promise object in that promise object it might contain the data what you are expecting or it might contain some other data so based on the data of promise object you have to do some kind of operation apart from that nothing you have to do some kind of operation so let's see how we can do so for this we will create one basic front end application using our html and javascript and maybe we will add some css so i am just creating here i will just add one simple heading and some paragraph here and i want one button here now whenever i click on this button whenever i click on this button i just want to send one request to a server now server will receive some response like they will send some response to us as a client we will receive the response and whatever response we receive that response data we want to show here on the client maybe in order list format or in an order list format so now from client if you want to send a request you require url now this url will be provided by the server side people now we don't have any server side application now we don't have any database so for that we will take the help of one third party third party applications will take the help of third party application so there is a website called json placeholder now this json placeholder website is maintaining one backend application and they are maintaining some database and in their database they are storing some data they are keeping some data now they are telling that if you want this resource you request to this url let's assume that this json placeholder people are maintaining one database in this database you have the data like users information there are, there are some users information there is some post information there is some comment information like users can like in your facebook you can do some kind of comments right like this they have some comments information they have some post information like in your linkedin or in your facebook you can add some kind of posts right so like this they are maintaining some post information and they are maintaining some user list information in their database now what this json placeholder people are saying if you want this url if you want this users data if you want this users data i will provide you one url i will provide you one url url1 you you just send the request to this url if you send the request to this url i will give you all the users information so this json placeholder people are saying we will give one url to you if you give if you request this url we will send all the users information we have one more url if you send the request to this url we will give all the post information there is one more url if you send the request to this url we will give all the comments information now once you receive this comments post or user information at client now whatever you want to do the do with this data you can do whatever you want to do with this data you can do okay so for that we required one front end application now here i am just creating one front end application called fetch.html okay here simple user interface i am creating something like users data okay now here i am creating one paragraph something called lorem 100 and i have here simple button something like get users now all these things i can add inside one div now here i can add some class 
something like container. I can create one fetch.css file. Now this CSS file I can link with my HTML file. Whatever styles you want to add, you can add here that styles. Okay, let's suppose I'm just adding some padding here. Something like 50 pixel. And maybe I just want to add my uh, H2. For H2, I will add color, something like green. Okay. Now, if I load this document in my browser, it is something like this. Okay, now my requirement is whenever I click on this button, whenever I click on this button, I want to send one request to a server. It means whenever we click on this button, whenever we click on this button, we want to perform some operation. So if you want to perform any operation in your JavaScript, you have to create one function. So I'm creating one function here. Something like function get data. Now for this, I am creating one separate JavaScript file. And this JavaScript file, I will just integrate with my HTML. Now inside this JavaScript file, I'm just creating one function, function fn get here data. So let's see what we have taken here fn get data so fn get data now whenever i click on this button whenever i click on this button this function will be called now in this function what i need to do i need to send one request to a server so if you want to send a request to a server what you have to do you have to simply use fetch function like this now to this fetch function you have to pass the url now, as a client developer, you are not creating that URL. So that URL information will be given by server side people. So now we don't have any server side application and the database. So what we will do, we will go to the website called JSON placeholder. If you go to this website called JSON placeholder here, if you just scroll down, if you scroll down here, you will find some links. If you scroll down under resources, under resources, you will find some links. So now this website is maintaining around 100 post information in their database. They have nearly 500 comments information in their database. They have some 100 albums information in their database. They have nearly 5000 photos information in their database. Like this something to do's and there is something called users. They are maintaining some 10 users information. Like if I click on this link, see, this is the data what we will receive from the server. If you send the request to them, this is what the data they are sending to us. So you can copy this URL and this URL you can paste inside your fetch. Now what fetch will do, fetch will send the request to this URL that request will be received by json placeholder server side application they will connect with the database and they will send us all the 10 users information now what this fetch is going to do it will take that all the 10 users information it will create one promise object and it will return us that promise object it means fetch is returning us one promise object now, if you want to take or if you want to handle the data from that promise object, you have two ways. You can go with async await or you can go with then catch. Let's suppose I want to go with then catch. Now, this entire fetch will return one promise object. So, you can catch in one variable like promise object. And on this promise object, you can call your then function. 
and then you can call your catch function. This is one way how we can do. Or else, what we can do? Here, no need to create like this extra variable. Now, we know that fetch will return one promise object, right? So, on that object, we can directly call one then function. And then we can call one catch function. Now, then we'll take one callback function. So, I'm just passing one callback function here. Catch will also take one callback function. Here you will have the error data. Here you will have the success data. Now what this fetch is going to do? This fetch will return one promise object, right? In that promise object, you will have the data. But whatever data it will return first time, that data will be in the binary format. Binary format means data will be in the zero ones format. And as a human, we won't understand that zero ones data. So what this fetch is doing, it is giving us one function called JSON. It is saying that on this data, on this data, you call one JSON function. And what this JSON function will do in this data, like this data is in the binary format, right? So this data will be converted into your JSON format. And what this JSON internally it will do, it will create one more promise object. And in that promise object, it will store the data and it will return that data. If it is returning the data means again, we have to handle. So what we will do from this callback function, we will explicitly return that data. And we will add one more then here. Now, why we are adding one more then? Because success.json function will return one more promise object. That is the reason that new promise object again, we have to handle here. Now here we will receive our actual data. Now I can do here console.log of data. Console.log of data. Now if I go back to my browser, if I just right click, open the inspect. If I just go to this console and if I click on get users, now see I have received here one array. In that array, I have totally 10 elements. Each element is one object. If I expand that object in each object, you will find this many information. This much information we are getting related to one user. Like this, they are sending the 10 users information. Like they are giving us address of users. They are giving us the company details of user. They are providing the email ID of user, ID of the user, name of the user, phone number of the user, user name of the user, like this, they are providing us a lot of details. Now, out of these details, you decide what you want to show on this screen, what you want to show to the user. Do you want to show all the details or you want to show some specific data? Now, let's assume that I just want to show the name of all the users. I want to print the name of all the users in order format. It means I need to create one UI order list and that to dynamically I have to create. So for that, what I will do here, this is the place where I am receiving the data. This is the place where I am receiving the data. So here I will create one OL tag. So document, document dot create element of OL, where OL. Now I need to create LI, how many LI? depends upon how many users information I am getting. So for that, what I can do, I can go with data dot for each. For each will take one callback function in that you will have some one first parameter as an element. Now here I will create var li equals to document dot create element of li. of li now once li is created now simply i will say li dot li dot inner text equals to what you want to add so inside this element there is a property called name i want to add that name so if you see here 
if i just right click go to inspect go to the console if i expand this object there is a property called name this name i want to display and this li i want to add inside my ol and once i have done this entire operation then that li i want to add inside my body here i want to add inside my body so i will just take id id equals to something like body only i will take so now once this entire operation is done then what i will do i will take the reference of my body and inside that body i will add this append child what i want to add oh yeah. so what i am doing i am sending a request to a server server is receiving me uh, like sending me some response so first server will give the response to fetch what fetch will do internally it will create one promise object it will add that data inside the promise object and whatever data it is adding it is adding in the binary format so we will receive here the data in the binary format now that data we have to convert into json so we are calling here json function now this json is a predefined function now json will convert that data into json format again it will create new object and that new data will be added in that new object and that new object will be returned again that new object is a promise object that is the reason again we have to handle this then now here we will receive our actual data now once we receive actual data now we have to create ui dynamically so here i am creating one order list afterwards using this for each i am creating one li in that li i am adding the data that li i am adding in my ol finally that ol i am adding in my body now if i go back here now if i click on get users now see here i got the information of all the users now this data here whatever data you are seeing here whatever data you are seeing this data is coming from server it is not coming from uh, any of our files or it is not coming from uh, like we haven't hard coded this data this entire data is coming from the server so like this here you can create whatever ui you want you can create table you can create card you can create like this ol ul paragraph whatever you want you can create now let's assume that due to some issue due to some issue we are receiving the failure data we are receiving the failure data in that case we have to show some message to the user so what i will do i will create here one h2 document dot create element of h2 and in this h2 i will add some message something like something went wrong something went wrong while fetching the data and then this h2 i want to add inside my dom so again i have to get the document dot get element by id okay of body dot append child of h2 if i want i can just say h2 dot style dot font size i can increase the font size to something like 52 pixel h2 dot style dot color i can show in the red color so like this if i am receiving the success data i am doing something if i receive the failure data i am doing something so if i go back here now see if i click on i got get users data suppose if i am adding here wrong url suppose i am just doing some here i am just removing this e if i am entering wrong url now see here we got something went wrong while fetching the data okay now 52 pixel looks so much big 
I will add here something like 42 pixel. Now see, if I don't handle this UI, if I don't handle here UI, if I don't handle this, in that case, what happens? If I click on get user, nothing will display here. Now user will simply, he will click on this button and he will be like in confusion state. Why data is not displaying here? Why data is not displaying here? Now he don't know that like here wrong URL has been added or something went wrong. That is the reason you are not getting the data. Like he is not able to recognize because he is not good technically, right? So he don't know what went wrong. Now anything can go wrong, right? Now we have here only control. So I am doing the mistake here. But sometimes there can be a problem at server only. Like whenever they are connecting with the database, maybe some issue might have occurred. Maybe in the database, there might be some issue. Maybe while sending the response back to the client, there might be some issue. The issue can be at any stage. Okay. So if you are not able to get the data, in that case, you have to handle that situation. You have to show to the user that there is some issue while getting the data from server. How to do that? For that, we are handling our error response here. It means now we are managing both the situation. We are just assuming, okay, if I get success data, what I need to do? If I get failure data, what I need to do? We are just assuming and we are doing that. Now, as of now here, I'm just adding the data. Like I'm just hard coding the, this error message, but you can make this as a dynamic also. Depends upon what issue is faced at server level. According to that, you can change the messages also. So now if I come back here, now if I click on get users, I got like something went wrong while fetching the data. Now user will come to know, okay, something went wrong. Now suppose if everything goes well, if everything goes well, in that case, you will receive the data. You will receive the data. Now it's, I am showing in the order list. You can show in any UI, right? You can create whatever UI you want. So this is how you are going to encounter your promise object, especially whenever you are doing network calls, 99% you are going to encounter promise object at network calls only. At network calls only. So that is the reason yesterday I have said, you don't get much chance to create the promise object. You will be always handling the promise object. You will be always handling the promise object. Okay, this is how we do the get request. Now there can be a post request also, post request also. Post request means from client, we will be sending the data to server. Now we don't have any server, we cannot send the data, but the syntax will be something like this. You can use fetch, by default fetch will take get request. If you want to do post request, the first argument will be URL. Second argument will be one object. And in this object, you can pass some properties like first property you can pass something like method and here you have to say post method method type is post now what are these methods these methods are nothing but they are just identity what server has to do like if you pass get then server will understand that client is requesting some data if you add here post it means client will uh, server will understand that client is sending some data so we have to store that, that data somewhere in the database or in the file system. You have something called put also. Put means already there might be some data with the server. Now client is requesting to modify that data. They are requesting to modify that data. If you say delete, delete means from client, we are requesting some delete request to the server. We are requesting some delete request to the server. So like this, we have some method types, get, post, delete, put, and we have one more patch. Patch means we are not trying to modify the entire data. We are trying to modify only part of data, part of data that is for patch. So we will see full fledged examples about this post, put, delete, and patch in our react.js. Once we start with react.js, 
there we will create one dummy server and in that dummy server i will show you all these operations like get operation post operation put operation patch operation and delete operation and this urls how to create this urls how to create this apis how to connect with the database like how to create server side application that we will learn once we start with the node js so using node express we are going to learn our back end development using react we are going to learn our front end development in react we will use fetch and there is one more library called axios we will use those that axios library also so in your real time no one will develop the application with plain javascript everybody will go with some kind of framework or library like react angular view so some this kind of libraries or frameworks are used whenever like in real time if people wants to create a web application so this is about fetch now i have created one video on strings strings and its methods okay i will push that video here i will add one more link something called video.js now here i will add that video link so here instead of js i will make it text yesterday i have added one video today i will add one more link here so you will find the link of a video where you will find the concept of string and string methods now string methods are very similar to your array methods how you have worked on array methods very similar to that we have string methods so i have explained a nearly 10 to 11 methods so you can just go through those 11 methods now in our javascript do we have only 11 methods answer is again no for string also we have nearly 30 plus methods so if you understand that 11 methods then understanding remaining methods will be very easy and i have shown you in that video where you can find all those 30 methods from where you can learn okay now if i open our javascript content i think one more callback hell i have to explain Now we know here JavaScript, we know the features of JavaScript, we know the data types, we know the variables, we know the console statement. After that, we have explored functions. In that, we have explored all parameterized function, return function, callback function, higher order function, anonymous function, arrow function. All those we have explored. We have explored JavaScript objects, how to access, how to update, how to delete javascript arrays and methods strings and its methods anyways i have created a video so that video will be available to you guys we have learned about dom in that dom we have seen right how to access id how to access tag name class name using names query selector inner text inner html and i have told you to explore text content i have explained you difference between inner text and inner html now, if you have explored text content, then you might have understood the difference between inner text, inner HTML and text content. Now here changing the values of attributes. We have seen how to change the values of attributes. If you remember one task we have done show hide password. I have just explained you about event listener event handler. Hoisting we know scope chain what is scope chain and lexical scoping already we know this concept but maybe these terms i have not used that is the reason you might get confused now these terms are related to your closure concepts these terms are related to your closure concepts this we know call apply bind we know closures we know promise we know fetch we know now here in ecmascript we know what is the difference between var let const this template literal uh, template literals i have explained uh, template literals or uh, template string both are same 
uh, I have just explained this concept in this string video. While explaining about string, I have explained about this. Array, destructuring object, we know default parameter, rest parameter, spread parameter. Default parameter, you might don't know. So default parameter is something like this. Suppose I have created one function. Now in this function, I have, let's suppose I have name and CT as a parameter. Console.log. Okay, here let's suppose I'm printing name comma CT. Now here, if I call this F1, I have to pass two arguments. Let's suppose I'm passing Raj. I'm passing only one argument. I'm not passing second argument. But for this second parameter, I want to add some default parameter value. So in that case, what we can do here only itself, we can assign some default value here. Suppose here I'm assigning Delhi. Now to your parameter, by default, you can assign some value. You can assign any type of value. You can assign number type of value, string type of value, or you can assign object also. Now this is called default parameter value. Nothing but we are assigning some default value to our parameter. Now, if I just execute it, here node, if I say default para, let me just do here clear node default para. Now here it will print Raj Delhi. It means to our parameters by default, we can assign some value. Here also I can assign some value like Rahul. Now here if I execute it, now see I got Raj. Now why I got Raj? Because I am passing argument. Suppose if I don't pass argument, in that case it will print Rahul. It is printing Rahul. So it is like a default parameter value we can pass. So if you are passing argument, that argument value will be replaced here. If you are not passing argument, in that case, default value will be printed. So that is your default parameter. Now we know rest parameters, we know spread parameters, callback. This concept I have to explain, callback help. Okay, so this video also I will add in that string. Callback, I will take one example and I will explain you what is callback hell. Basically, callback hell is nothing but callback inside callback. Like if you have a chain of callbacks, like there is one function. So let me just explain you. Callback hell. Now let's assume that I have one function here, function f1. Now let's assume this function f1 is taking one parameter called f. Now, whenever I call this F1, now let's assume that I am passing here one callback function. Now, this callback function will go and store inside this F. Nothing but that F I can call here like this. Now, let's assume that this callback function is also taking one more parameter called X. It means now whenever I am calling this function, I need to pass one argument and let's suppose I am passing one more callback function. It means now I have to call this X. Now this F, now here I am, this callback function is there, right? This is going and storing here. Now we are calling that F. Now we have to pass one argument. Now here again, I am passing the callback function. Now let's assume that it is taking one more Y. Now that Y, let's assume that I am calling here. Now this Y is taking one more callback function. Something like Z. Again here I am calling Z. Again I am passing one more callback function. Now this chain of callback function, callback into callback into callback we are going to call as a callback. This entire process we are going to call as a callback. So before promise concept, people used to follow this technique before introduction of promise concept.
Now, after the introducing promise concept, now no one follows this callback hell kind of thing. Everybody goes with the promise kind of thing. So callback hell is nothing but in your interviews, they will just ask in the general because in our real time, we will never implement this callback hell now because we have a promise object, like we have a promise concept. So promise concept can resolve this callback hell issues. Like whatever we used to do with the callback, same thing we can do with the promise now. Like inside the promise object, we can have one more promise object that gives much more uh, easier and neat and easy way to handle the situation. So before promise object, we used to use this callback help. I mean, callbacks into callbacks, lot of callbacks we used to do. And callback into callback into callback, that is called callback help. Now it creates a lot of confusion. It creates a lot of confusion once you enter into this callback hell. Like if you have, let's just assume that you have 15 functions. In every function, we have callback, callback, callback. So function one callback is two, two callback is three, three callback is four, four callback is five. Like this, if you have the chain of callback, then that scenario we are going to call as a callback hell. So callback hell, they will just ask you in the interview purpose also that too very rarely you will see that people are asking about callback hell because we won't use in the real time much. So why people will ask you if they are using in their projects, then only they will ask about the callback hell to you guys. Okay. So here I will add the uh, link of that string. And I will add that operator also, right? Bitwise operator. Okay, now operator concept that was completely additional for you because operator is the topic which I did not include it in your syllabus because that is the common topic which you might have learned everywhere in every programming language you might have learned, especially you might have learned in C language. If you are coming from Java, in Java also you might have learned you might have, you might coming from C++, you might have learned about operators. So operator is just a common topic, which basically I did not include it in your syllabus, but still I have covered that topic. Okay. So tomorrow in tomorrow's session, I will start with the CSS topic, uh, whichever topic is pending that topic I will cover in tomorrow's session. So in tomorrow's session, I will just cover a uh, CSS pending topic. Yeah, that's all guys for two days. Uh, so you want link, right? So let me just give that link. Uh, guys, a video will be uploaded by admin. Like I don't have the control on videos. So you guys can ping to the admin people. They will help you out with that. Okay. Yes. JavaScript is end. Uh, once we're done with the CSS, then we will start with bootstrap. A uh, bootstrap will take one or two sessions. Not much. Bootstrap is very easy. If you know CSS. Understanding bootstrap is very, very easy. Uh, you just download, Pujari, you download that paint file from the GitHub, okay? You have to just download. Once it is downloaded, then just right click and open with the paint tool. Then that paint files will be opened. It will open in GitHub also in case if it is not opening in your GitHub, then just try to download that. You will have a download option there.
uh, already I have added oops oops videos already in yesterday's uh, repository. If you see, already I have added the link there. 